on. Fish on the speed spoon, baby. <laughs> oh boy. Right there. Fish on, right there. On the speed spoon, 15 feet deep. Get some marks on the screen. Drop that down to 15 feet and an instant hookup. And that bank. There we go. Yes. An orange speed spoon. Oh, that's a good fish. Fish on. On the speed spoon. Ha ha. Ooh, that feels like a good one. And there we go. Woo. That one came off the hook right there. Fish on right there, right on those marks. This is great. I love aggressive trolling. I found these fish. They're feeding on bait. They want to get it on. I'm pounding them. I'm trolling, you know, almost three miles an hour. And uh, it's been fish after fish after fish. Right there, there's another one. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Right there, right on that, uh, on that orange speed spoon. Fish on. I can't even get a cup of coffee here. Holy mackerel. <laughs> Main thing is, don't spill the coffee. Oh yeah. Mr. Rainbow. Right there. I'm Cal Kellogg, and my hybrid lead core system has brought lead core trolling back into the spotlight for trout and salmon anglers all over the country. If you'd like the world's best lead core trolling rod, get on over to fishhuntshoot.com and pick up one of my iconic bright yellow lead core rods today. You won't regret it because you'll be yelling, fish on tomorrow. Howdy guys, Kel Kellogg here. I'm actually gonna answer a viewer question and I apologize, I forgot the, the viewer's name. This was a week or two ago. Someone asked in the comments on one of the videos if I could talk a little bit about trout movement and uh, I absolutely can. And, uh, and I'm gonna do that right now. Lucy, are out, Lucy and I are out on a walk and we're heading back to the truck. Um, so any discussion of trout movement needs to start with temperature. And we'll, you know, I'm focusing on rainbow trout here, but, but we could be talking about browns or brook trout too. Um, key temperature, you know, for rainbow trout is anywhere from 45 to 65. That's a temperature range where the fish are real active, they feel real comfortable. Um, 56 is the optimum temperature. That's where they would prefer to be, but if you're anywhere in that 45 to 65 degree zone on the surface, you could pretty much bet that there are gonna be trout on the surface of that lake or that body of water at some point during the day. Um, now, in terms of daily movement, something you can just kind of etch in stone, and uh, you know, I learned this from bass guys, but it definitely applies to trout too. Trout move up and down in the water column throughout the day. If they're near structure, they might move up and on to structure. If they're out in you know, open water, they're just gonna move up in the water column. Um, they typically move up during periods of low light, and they drop back down during periods of, of high light. Um, other factors that can uh, that can influence you know trout movement are environmental factors. Um, my favorite factor you've heard me talk about here a bunch on the channel is wind. When when we have wind or breeze and we see those ripples or those white caps on top of the surface, that's really a visual manifestation of current, and that current extends down below the surface too, and that's that disturbance you'll see on, on top of your sonar unit when you're in choppy water or you're in white caps. What you're seeing there is swirling current. Trout love current, they know that that wind chop creates current, it introduces more oxygen to the water, it draws bait fish up into the current, and the trout, they, they drop into that current as well to hunt and just to feel good. More oxygen, they orient into the current, they just feel more, more alive, more, more feisty. So when you get that surface current, it's a good idea to pull up, get some lures in that current and work that area. You also have to keep an eye open for what the wind is doing to the lake around you. And I'll illustrate this with a quick story. I've told this story before, but uh, if you hadn't heard it, here, here it goes again. 
was up on Shasta fishing the Spring Derby with Paul Neeland in the fish sniffer boat. And we weren't struggling, we were picking some fish off, but uh, we noticed that you know the wind came up and we noticed behind a small point that there was a, the wind had, had formed current, it had formed an eddy and we could see surface debris, including a pretty big stick, just swirling around in maybe a 40 or 50 yard area. So we steered into that just to check it out. Paul was pulling a watermelon apex and I was pulling rig shad, so we were trolling pretty slow. Um, as soon as we got into that eddy area, the, the sonar unit lit, lit up with bait and hard marks and we immediately started catching a bunch of fish. And I think we ended up seventh in the tournament that day, primarily because we explored that wind-driven eddy behind that point. It just attracted a bunch of fish. It only held up for about 40 minutes. The wind slowed down, the eddy stopped spinning, and the sonar screen went clean. So that's another good tip. If you find some, some micro situation that attracts trout, make the most of it while you can because it can go away as quickly as it forms. So if you see something unique and you get into it and it's paying off, don't dilly-dally. It might hold up for hours, but it might hold up just for minutes. And uh, you know, you, you, want, you want to strike when the iron is hot, so to speak. Um, Another factor that can concentrate trout in a lake, and other fish too, catfish, bass, whatever, is when we get rain in late fall and winter, and we get those seasonal streams starting to pour into the lake, and they don't have to be big. It can be a trickle of water six inches wide. What that does is it introduces food to the, to the, to the main lake, it introduces oxygen, typically introduces a temperature change, and it also can introduce a color change. The water coming in might be muddy, and, and you'll catch fish around that muddy area in the cove where it's flowing in, it might be introducing clear water to an already muddy lake and the fish will be holding in that clear water, picking off you know whatever they can, you know, targets of opportunity. The way to fish those is either to go in there and fan cast with spoons or jigs or whatever, or to toss out a slip bobber with a minnow below it, maybe a night crawler below it, and you just don't know what you're gonna catch. You might get a, a trout to first cast, that bobber might jerk under, it might be a six pound catfish, and the next cast you might get a, a three pound spotted bass because all the fish in the lake are drawn to those factors, so when you see that in inflowing water, it's a good idea to get in there and explore those areas. But you know, just to sum up, and I, I think this 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 kind of a sum up will just keep this in mind. This will help you catch more and bigger fish throughout the year. When you're on the water and the light levels low, expect the fish to move up in the water column. When you have a high sun and no surface chop, expect the fish to drop down. If you get current in the form of wind chop draw your lures up and explore that surface area. Keep your eyes open. If you see anything like that, that vortex or eddy that Paul Neeland and I saw, get in there, explore it. And if the fish are there, don't, don't mess around. Make the most of it because it's not going to last forever. Um, same thing with inflowing water. If you're out in the lake and you see some inflowing water, explore that area. Check it out. You might just stumble on a honey hole. Sometimes those areas don't hold any fish, but sometimes they hold a tremendous number of fish. So those are just kind of my rules of thumb. That's stuff that I've come up with with, you know, 40 some years out on the water. Um, anything that's different on a lake, you know, structure, islands, reefs, anything like that, any feature that's different than the surrounding water, you should explore it. It might not hold fish, but it might be a red hot, you know, feeding zone at any given time. So explore irregularities, whether it's current, inflowing water structure or whatever. And just remember throughout the day, those trout are going to move up when the light level's low and they're going to move down when the light level's high. Mark that away, put that, put that in the mental vault. Remember that when you're out on the water um, and uh, it is definitely going to help you. I want to thank you guys for all the support. Thank you for watching our videos. If, if you guys weren't watching, we couldn't do this kind of stuff. And uh, if you're looking for trout gear, rods, reels, and more, you know where to go. Fishhuntshoot.com. Thanks a lot, guys. You have a wonderful day and I will catch you next time right here on YouTube. Lucy and I are going home and do some chores. Well, actually, she's probably going to take a nap. I'm going to do most of the chores. Anyway, guys, I'm Kel Kellogg. I will catch you later. Look at that stud of a rainbow. Wow. What a beautiful fish. Incredible. He's heavy. He's super heavy. Wow. Very nice.